So today we are going to discuss what are the recent advances in the treatment of autism and cerebral palsy and several other neurological conditions which are considered to be otherwise incurable and what are the benefits of integrated therapies how do we put different therapies together to help our children so uh, that is what this uh, seminar is about and it is primarily targeted to parents families from the gcc countries so i'd like to uh, welcome all of you. Hello, salam alaikum, and uh, wish you a, a very uh, en en enlightening, uh, informative evening ahead. So, um, I speak on behalf of the Newton Brain and Spine Institute, Navi Mumbai, where all this work has been done. I'm also professor and head at the medical college in the city of Mumbai. So I'd like to state at the very beginning that this presentation is for information purposes only. Uh, it is not a substitute for a medical consultation because for a medical consultation, you should consult your local physician. And we gratefully acknowledge Meditours and the parents in the Gulf countries uh, who have invited us to make this presentation. Uh, Meditours is an amazing company. They have come together uh, in particular to help uh, parents, families in the Gulf countries uh, to be able to access the latest and uh, most advanced treatments for special needs children uh, in different parts uh, of the GCC countries. So why are we here? We are here because we all have these special needs children. They may be autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome. We love our children and there can be nothing, nothing more painful then having our children suffer from something and us not being able to help them. We go from doctor to doctor and all the doctors say the same thing, that nothing can be done for your children, just rehabilitation. And I'm here to tell you today that that is no longer true, that modern medicine, recent research, biotechnology, they have come up with newer treatments with which we can help our children. So uh, presently what happens is, you know, if our child has autism or cerebral palsy, you go to a doctor and first thing you're told is there's no cure. And then, of course, you're said there's no operative intervention that we can do. The only thing that, you can, that can help our children is rehabilitation and there are no medicines except for symptomatic cure. You all have been through this. You've been to your uh, specialist doctors and they've told you exactly this, no cure, no surgery, no medicines, just rehabilitation. And once again, I'm here to tell you that this is not true anymore, that treatments are available that can help our children. So, um, you know, these are scans and we'll look later into the scans where, uh, you know, the parts that appear dark blue are damaged. And, you know, what I'm here to tell you is that we can correct these parts and I'll discuss this in greater detail later. So uh, now we have a whole lot of treatments together, which includes a combination of cell therapy, of different types of rehabilitation and integrated therapies. So a combination of cell therapies to repair the brain, the re conventional rehab, which you're already taking, along with certain integrative therapies together can help our children recover. So these are all, again, the, the therapies that we can use to help our children. So this is just a scan to show you. Uh, again, here you can see uh, in the, the, the blue part, which is the damaged part, uh, this is before the stem cells. And you can see after the stem cells, there is a significant and a very, very good recovery. And you can see functioning back. You can see overall in the brain also, there is a significant improvement. So... You know, this is a x-ray of someone with a fracture of the leg. You can see the bone is broken. And I ask you, if our child were to have a fracture of the leg, would we give physiotherapy on a broken leg? Would we give physiotherapy? Would we give rehabilitation on this? And the answer is no. What we would do is, we would take to an orthopedic surgeon who would fix the broken bones with plates and screws 
and now we will give rehabilitation on this repaired fixed bone. But for our special needs children, we are doing exactly the opposite. What we are doing is, here is a scan that shows brain damage before, blue, and we are giving rehabilitation on this brain damage. And I ask you, what if we could repair this brain damage, as you can see on the right-hand slide, and then give rehabilitation? Wouldn't the results be much, much better? And I'm here again today to tell you that there is no need. This is what we have been doing, giving rehabilitation on low-functioning, damaged, inactive brain. And that if we gave the same rehabilitation on activated brain, repaired brain, we could get amazing and miraculous results. So the old traditional thinking was that the brain and the spinal cord, which is also called the central nervous system, once it is damaged, you cannot regenerate it. Once it's damaged, it's damaged forever, for over a hundred years. Medical doctors, medical students have been told one thing, that the central nervous system cannot regenerate. And I'm here to tell you that there is a new thinking and the new thinking is that we can regenerate the brain by cellular replacement and repair. So this thinking has to change. But people have been thinking in the old thinking so long that they find it difficult to accept this, that cellular replacement can repair and regenerate damaged brain. So um, we are now going to talk a little bit about cell therapy. And I refer to cell therapy as an idea whose time has come. And cell therapy will help us shift from a state of hopelessness to one of hope. And at the end of this talk, I hope to leave you with a whole lot of hope for the future of our special children. So the word stem comes from the stem of a tree. And just like the stem of a tree gives rise to leaves, fruits, branches, etc., there are some cells which can give rise to any cell of the body. Now, just like the stem, this will give rise to branches and leaves and flowers and fruits. There are some cells which can become brain cells, muscle cells, blood cells, whatever we want. So a cell which can become any cell, that cell is called a stem cell. So there are different types of stem cells. You can get stem cells from our own body and put it back into our own body. This is referred to as autologous transplant, where you take stem cells from one part of the body where there is a lot of ex extra or excess and put it back in an area where there is needed. The other type of stem cell is when you take from somebody else, from a donor, and put it in a recipient. That is called allogenic. Two different words, autologous from the same body into the same body, allogenic from a donor. So what do stem cells do? Stem cells have the ability to repair, to replace and to regenerate. Now, these are three very important properties. When you repair the damage, when you replace cells which are not working and you regenerate cells that are inactive. And by doing this, Stem cells can repair any damage in the body. I like to show this clip from, um, you know, uh, just a small video clip of Stephen Hawking. You all, some of you may know him. Stephen Hawking was um, one of the greatest scientists who ever lived on this planet. They say, you know, along with Einstein, uh, he was, you know, Einstein and Stephen Hawking were the greatest two scientists. Stephen Hawking actually uh, suffered from a disease called motor neuron disease for which there was no cure and no solution. And he himself believed a lot in uh, the role of stem cells. And, and he, in fact, did a 10-part TV series on stem cells. And this is an uh, introduction to that. Stephen Hawking said that, you know, we are on the brink of a new era in the field of medicine, a time when we will be able to e heal our body of all diseases from cells within us, and these are called stem cells. So how do these stem cells work? So the first ability of these stem cells is that these stem cells multiply. So if you have a single stem cell, you can make a thousand or a couple of million stem cells from that. So this ability to multiply, divide, is a very important property of stem cells. Then stem cells not only multiply, 
and replicate themselves and make copies of themselves, but they can also differentiate into different cell types. So this is a very unique property where stem cells actually become other cells. They can become brain cells, heart cells, liver cells, and they repopulate the area where we put it. So this particular property of a stem cell, which can become any cell, a nerve, a heart, or muscle, blood, etc. So these two important properties is what makes stem cells a useful treatment modality. That if you have a few stem cells, you can make them divide and make many, and you can convert them. So if I need them for the brain, I can make them brain cells. If I need them for the muscle, I can make them muscle cells. So that's the beauty of stem cells, the ability to multiply and convert. And this is a picture from our own research. Uh, this is what a stem cell looks like. And when we grew these cells in the laboratory, it, they became nerve cells. These are like brain cells. So before we started treating people, we had researched and we found that these brain cells have the ability to become nerve cells like this. So this is our own work. Now, they also have an ability to release certain positive chemicals in the body, and these are called growth factors. So there are several growth factors which help in repairing the brain damage. These are positive chemicals. And then they also improve the blood supply. So you can see the blood supply. This is something called angiogenesis. So when stem cells go to a place, they attract more blood towards it. So these four properties, they multiply and divide, they convert into different cell types, they produce positive chemicals, and they improve the blood supply. With this, they help to repair damaged tissue. There are different types of stem cells. You can get stem cells from the embryo, uh, which is from the, uh, you know, from aborted tissue or spare uh, test tube babies. So on when, when we were all born, how has birth happened? The sperm of the father and the egg of the mother come together and become a fertilized egg. This then multiplies. One becomes two, two becomes four. And on the fifth day of life, we are a bundle of cells like this called blastocyst. These are embryonic stem cells. So all of us, we started our life. On the fourth or fifth day of life, we were a bundle of embryonic stem cells in our mother's womb. And from this, so from this now, the whole body is formed. Which means if you could take this and take it to a laboratory, you could make any organ possible. Because in the mother's womb, all the organs come from this bundle of cells. But embryonic stem cells have some ethical issues about their use. They have potential dangers and complications. So <coughs> we do not use embryonic stem cells. Okay, I wish to emphasize, we do not use embryonic stem cells. You can also get stem cells from... Uh, you know, the umbilical cord, which connects the mother and baby at birth. And uh, this umbilical cord is rich with stem cells. And uh, nowadays, as you're aware, sometimes at birth, these are being preserved. And then they can be used later if they have been preserved. But we don't use this either. What we use are adult stem cells. They are called adult, but they are then children also. These are stem cells within our own body. So in our body, especially in the bones, uh, in some areas of the fat, we have millions of stem cells. And there are some spare there. So if we take out a little bit from there, there is no harm or no damage, and we can use it where we want. So what we do is we use adult stem cells. That means stem cells taken from the patient's or the child's own body, and mostly from the bone. And the last type, induced pluripotent stem cells, these are uh, stem cells which are still in the research stage where the outside is adult and inside is embryonic. So we use this only, all right? Now, uh, what happens is a lot of people, you know, uh, have negative things to say about stem cells and you hear your doctor saying, no, it's dangerous, it's risky, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever they say is because of embryonic stem cells. We don't use that. Adult stem cells are extremely safe. There's no side effect. In fact, adult stem cells have been used for the last 50 years to treat many blood disorders, including blood cancers, etc. So it's a very safe treatment. And comparing the risk of embryonic stem cell to the risk of adult stem cell 
is like comparing the risk of alcohol to homemade orange juice, saying they are both beverages, so the risk is the same. That doesn't make any sense. So I wish to tell you that what we are using is like homemade orange juice. We are taking cells from the body, putting it back into the body, and not embryonic stem cells, which are taken from outside. So we, we work with uh, adult stem cells because they're completely safe. They never become tumors. They don't get rejected. And it's very easy to get them from the bone marrow. And there are no ethical issues about its use. Now, how do, you, how do we put them back? So the way to put it back is you can inject it with a thin needle into the fluid in the lower spine. Because from this fluid, it goes straight to the brain. So this is our preferred method too, because this is just through a single needle. Just with a needle, you put it in the fluid, it goes straight out. You could also inject it intravenously, intraarticular. You could put it in the muscles. You could put it through the nose or directly into the brain, etc. But this is the method that we prefer. As you can see, none of all of these are through various injections only. <clears throat> We prefer intrathecal because it's minimally invasive. There are no side effects. With a thin needle, we can go into the lower spine and inject it. In a few minutes, uh, it goes. And most important, all these cells go directly to the brain where they are needed. So we are putting the cells directly where they want it, just through a needle. So uh, what exactly, therefore, is stem cell therapy? It is basically we are using healthy cells. We are using good cells to replace the damaged cells. So that is the basic uh, uh, fundamental of stem cell that you take healthy. It's like this is a scan showing the damage. And if you put stem cells, you can see that the damage goes away. Again, you put stem cells and the damage, it goes away. So what's the scientific base for stem cell therapy? Uh, you are all aware of the Nobel Prize, which is the highest recognition given to any innovative new research uh, uh, you know, aspect of medicine. And three times in 1990, 2007, 2012, the Nobel Prize uh, in medicine has been given to stem cell research. So it's, it has never been so that one field of medicine has got the Nobel Prize three times. That's never happened before. But stem cells has got the uh, Nobel Prize three times. Uh, what is the scientific basis of the work that we do at Neurogen? So all our work is published in international journals. We have a total of 101 scientific papers, uh, uh, 16 on autism, 15 on cerebral palsy, 18 on muscular dystrophy, etc. So all the work that we do and all the data I'm going to present to you now has been published in peer-reviewed medical journals. Now, why is this important? This is very important because when something is peer-reviewed, it means somebody outside of us has studied our data and validated its scientific content and the ethics of doing that work. So this is a process called peer review. Otherwise, see, when you go to a doctor and a doctor says his results are so-and-so, how do you know he's saying the truth? The only way to know he's saying facts is if his work is published in scientific medical journals. That means somebody outside has validated those results. So we have over 101 scientific papers. Also in several international textbooks, like this is an international textbook on recent advances in autism. They've included a chapter on stem cell therapy in autism, and this was written by us. In this other paper on cerebral palsy, challenges for the future, this is a European textbook by Intech. They introduced a chapter, stem cell therapy for cerebral palsy, and this chapter was written by us. Uh, in this book on physical disabilities, again, stem cell therapy in pediatric neurological dose, this, this was written by us. <coughs> in this book on muscular dystrophy, published by Avid Science, stem cells in muscular dystrophy, it was written by us. So as you can see, medical textbooks are now introducing chapters on stem cell therapy. And when people look for authors on this subject, most of the time they ask us, they approach us to write those chapters in view of the large volume of work we have done, in view of the large scientific publications that we already have. The government of India at the highest level is supportive of stem cells. As you can see, this is our Prime Minister, respected Sri Narendra Modi. And uh, when he went to Japan, he actually visited the Stem Cell Institute of Kyoto University, where Nobel Prize winning uh, Professor Yamanaka works. Uh, it's again not very common that a Prime Minister visits you know, a stem cell facility. 
in India too, whenever he gets a chance, he has made it a point to visit stem cell facilities like this one in Bengaluru. And uh, this is me with uh, with our prime minister, honorary prime minister. Uh, there's a book which I've written for which he has written the introduction. And uh, this is myself presenting him with a copy of that book. Uh, here you can see that introduction. So this is a book which I've written and uh, Sri Narendra Modi ji has written the introduction. Again, it's not very common to have somebody at the level of Sri Narendra Modi ji write an introduction for a medical book, right? So, so that is a matter of pride for us. And uh, here's a small video Mid which shows uh, he actually gave a very impassioned speech in parliament on stem cells. Let's hear that. I Japan. So Japan, my work, I have one I a Nobel laureate scientist Yakamaha. I got it. Because stem cell in the research मैंने जितना पढ़ा था तो मेरे मन में आया था शायद इनकी एक खोज हमारे काम आ सकती है क्या हम गए तो वहां गए उनसे चर्चा की और बेंगलोर के हमारे साइंस इंस्टीट्यूट के साथ आज उस दिशा में हमारा काम हो रहा है कि स्टेम सेल्स के द्वारा हमारे युवा साइंटिस्ट कुछ खोज करें सो अगेन इट्स नॉट ऑफन दैट यू नो पीपल लाइक एट द लेवल ऑफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर टॉक इन द पार्लियामेंट अबाउट स्टेम सेल्स uh, so that is the importance that he gives to the subject. Now let's look at uh, how this treatment is done. So the beauty of this treatment is that it's a very simple procedure. It's not a surgical operation. There is no cutting. There is no stitching. Let us look at how it is done. So basically what we do is we put a needle into the bone, into the pelvic bone, which is just above the hip bone. And uh, we uh, aspirate and take out the bone marrow from within the bone. Uh, this takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Then we take these cells to our laboratory uh, where we sort of separate or filter the bone marrow and remove the stem cells. And then uh, this is done in a couple of hours. And then we, once the stem cells are separated with a very thin needle, we inject it into the lower spine fluid. And from there, it goes all the way up to the brain. So in the whole procedure, the child gets only two needle pricks. With one needle, we take out and with one needle we put in. So there is no cutting, there is no stitching, there is no operation, there's no need for intensive care, no lines or tubes or anything like that. Just two simple needle pricks. And what are we putting into the child? We are putting cells taken from his own body. We just separate them out and inject it back. So that is the beauty of this treatment, the sheer simplicity. 15, 15 minutes, two injections. Now let's see a small, uh, you know, uh, we now see a small video of how exactly the procedure is done. Here you can see this is the bone marrow that is coming out as the child is sleeping. Here you can see we put the cells in the centrifuge machine. It, there are sophisticated machines that tell us uh, about the nature and quality of cells. And with a very thin needle, now we are, these are the stem cells and they are being injected. So let's watch this video again. Here you can see the bone marrow coming out. The child is sleeping. We take it to our laboratory. We filter it. And then with a very thin needle, we inject into the lower spine. So just two needle pricks, okay? So with one needle, we aspirate. Then we separate the stem cells. And with one thin needle, we inject it back, all right? So that is the beauty of this treatment. Now let's look at uh, autism. So, you know, in 2004, one out of 166 children got autism. In 2018, it went up to one in 59. In 2021, it's increased even further. It's come to be, you know, less than 50. So there has been a three times increase in the prevalence of autism, you know, just in the last 15 years. And never before have we seen any neurological disease or any condition in children where there has been such a severe increase in the incidence. So this means that currently there are 70 million people who are on the autism spectrum on the planet. That's 1% of the world's population. People don't realize 1% of the 
of the world's population has autism, which is a very, very large number. <coughs> so what exactly is autism? So basically, it's a neurodevelopmental disorder. It was described in 1943 <coughs> by Dr. Kanner. And normally, uh, you know, <coughs> you start seeing symptoms in the first three years of, um, uh, of, of life. Uh, we classify it as mild, moderate, and severe. And uh, we will look into this later. And boys have it four times more than girls. So the combination of symptoms is one of poor social interaction, problems in communication, and repetitive behavior. So this basically summarizes autism. Poor social interaction, impaired communication, and repetitive behavior. So what is new? Why am I talking to you? I mean, what has changed in the last few years that you should know? First, is our understanding of autism is much better. And secondly, we have this new treatment called stem cell therapy for autism. So earlier, autism was thought to be a psychiatric disorder, but now we believe it's a problem of brain development. Earlier, it was believed to be a static disorder. That means whatever you have once, the child, it remains the same. But now we know that actually... There is a progression in the brain if it is untreated. And earlier, we didn't know what was happening in the child's brain. We just diagnosed and left it. But today, we know. We know what is happening in the brain. And because we know what is happening in the brain, we can correct it. We can fix it. A question that all of you must be asking is, why did my child develop autism? You keep asking yourself that question, right? So uh, let's look at what are the different causes. And the causes can be many. They can be prenatal, that means during the birth process or, or when the mother was had the, had the child in the womb. It could be intestinal problems. It could be exposure to toxic chemicals. And it could be radiation, especially from mobile phones. So in prenatal, uh, the mother's physical health and emotional health is very important. So any infection that the mother has or diabetes, and things like that can actually affect uh, the, the brain of the developing child and cause autism. But we focus on physical health of the mother. The emotional health is just as important. So we have seen that maternal depression and uh, those mothers who use antidepressants, they have a higher incidence of autism. Polycystic ovarian disease in mothers and mothers who smoke, they are at a higher risk. Also, the age of the father is important. So a father who becomes uh, who has a child at 45 years, has a three and a half times greater risk of a child with autism than a father at 24. So nowadays, as you're realizing, we are having children as we grow older. So uh, uh, when fathers are older, there's a greater risk. A uh, lot of children, nine out of 10 children uh, with autism have intestinal problems, GI problems. And this is believed to, and this is, this is connected to the diet, the junk food, the fast food that we eat. Uh, this is also connected to you know, inadequate breastfeeding. Earlier, uh, breastfeeding was con continued for almost six months. Nowadays, very often women, because of work and other things, stop it earlier. So that that disrupts the intest uh, intestines of the child. Uh, this is something most people don't realize, that mobile phones have a small amount of radiation for a short distance. And when mothers are pregnant, if they use the mobile phone a lot, that radiation can actually damage the brain. And now we have a better understanding as to what this radiation does how it damages the protection system of the brain, which is referred to as the blood-brain barrier. Uh, now, there are certain chemicals we find, uh, we have found during our research that there are certain chemicals which can also damage the brain. One of them is lead. And uh, a little higher amount of lead can cause, there was a research conducted by an Australian university in India, which actually showed high lead levels uh, cause different aspects of intellectual disability. And this lead could be anywhere. It could be, you know, in, in paints, it could be in contaminated air, dust. And in India, we found it in uh, noodles. One of the most popular noodles, which was sold in India, had a high level of lead. So mercury in the body can also cause autism. Aluminium can also cause autism. Uh, now, this is a controversial topic because uh, there was a belief, there was a paper published by Dr. Wakefield in 1998 that showed that the preservatives used in vaccines were responsible for autism. This was, it raised a big storm in the medical world. And later on, of course, there were multiple papers that showed that uh, there was no correlation between the MMR vaccine and autism. But it's a controversial topic. Uh, 
many parents feel that their child worsened after the vaccination. We don't know whether that's true or not, but our medical advice to everybody is please take your vaccine because vaccines save more lives, they prevent more disease than anything else. Uh, because of this controversy, because we've heard some you know, parents hear this and they stop vaccinating the children. That is more dangerous. So vaccines are definitely life-saving. Please do not stop vaccinating your children. This is a very important message. So uh, we now have, of course, a better understanding of, of what is happening in the brains of our children. So this is a scan called a PET CT scan, where the blue is damaged brain, less functioning brain, inactive brain. And uh, we have found, and we've done this in all more than 2,500 kids with autism, more than 2,000 children with cerebral palsy, uh, with intellectual disability. Uh, we found all the children have this, but as normal children did not have this. So we did a study where normal children, where a pet was being done for other reasons, we looked at their brain and none of the normal children had, um, had this. So we now know for the first time in medical history why our child has symptoms of autism? Because there is a big part of the brain that's not functioning appropriately, that's inactive, that's weak. So now we know the cause. And uh, this work of ours has been published in a scientific journal, in the World Journal of Nuclear Medicine. This is our paper where we actually showed what are the changes in the brain in children with autism. So what we found in our research was that normal children, I mean, this is uh, this is a brain value. The higher it is, the better it is. And this is age. So 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15. So if you, the blue is normal children. So you can see at 3 years and as the age advances, the brain function keeps on increasing. But at children with autism, it goes on decreasing. Okay. Now, this was a very important finding. And this is our research. That there was, whereas normal children's brain metabolism increases with age in children with autism it decreases now why is this important <coughs> this is important because if you treat the children early if you treat the children here <coughs> five and ten years we only have to bridge this gap but if you treat the children late you have to bridge a bigger gap so what this means is that the earlier we treat our children the better results we are going to get. So we should treat them here. The later we treat our children, the more difficult it is going to be to treat them. So there are multiple therapies uh, which uh, help. Uh, these include various uh, rehabilitation methods such as applied behavioral analysis, speech therapy, occupational therapy, diet, uh, physical therapy, etc. Uh, there are different treatments like chelation, hyperbaric oxygen, biomedical, neurofeedback, and of course, stem cell therapy that we are going to talk about. So uh, applied behavioral analysis is, is um, uh, an evolving field which makes a big difference uh, in the children with autism. But the, the basis of this is there's a behavior that before every behavior, there is something that precedes it. And after every behavior, there's a consequence. Now, if you modulate that, you can actually affect behavior. Uh, the occupational therapy has a very important role to play and occupational therapy has all these things that you can see, sensory integration, activities of daily living, play, cognitive, recreational, vocation. So there are different aspects of OT and OT is the integral part of management of autism. Without this, we really cannot help our children. So a good occupation therapy program is crucial. Uh, sensory integration is a very, very important part of occupation therapy that also helps the children. This is what a sensory integration room looks like. This is our room at the Division Brain Spine Institute. These are specially designed rooms for these children. Uh, speech therapy is very important. The older thinking was that verbal speech is the only thing we have to work towards. But the new thinking is it's communication. Whether it's verbal speech or non-verbal, we have to teach them how to communicate. Uh, earlier it was believed that physiotherapy has no role in autism, but now we believe that physiotherapy has an important role because these children have, have coordination issues, you know, tone issues, weight issues, postural instability. So we now believe that physiotherapy is an integral part of, um, of this uh, of our rehab program. Then there's aquatic therapy, which uh, we again find very, very useful. Uh, these are all the listed improvements. They reduce the hyperactivity, improve sleep patterns. Um, you know, there are multiple other improvements in the sensory, social areas, etc. So, uh, we believe in uh, aquatic therapy a lot. 
Uh, then there are art-based therapies, there is music therapy, there is drama therapy, there is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Now, we have uh, now uh, included now hyperbaric oxygen in our regular program. So all our patients, along with the stem cells, we now uh, include hyperbaric oxygen because we believe that this makes a, a big difference. Uh, what is hyperbaric oxygen? This is when you put the child in a chamber and oxygen is given at more than uh, atmospheric pressure. So the entire blood, the liquid part of the blood, the plasma gets full of oxygen and oxygen goes to every little nook and corner, especially of the brain, but the whole body as well. Uh, so we believe that hyperbaric oxygen is a very important part of management of autism. And then there's neurofeedback, uh, where there are electrodes that are conducted and there is a communication or a feedback between the child's brain and the screen. So, you know, there is the removal of heavy metals in case there are heavy metals in the child, chelation, TRS, detox, etc. Uh, a lot of, you know, there are some supplements which are helpful like vitamin C, vitamin B6, uh, omega-3, prebiotics, uh, inulin, etc. So there is, uh, these supplements have an important role to play. Diet has a very important role to play. So we have to uh, keep these children, if possible, on a gluten-free, casein-free diet, vitamin-rich diet, a ketogenic diet, more of probiotics, prebiotics, uh, and we have to avoid food with sugar, additives, pesticides, etc. A ketogenic diet is one which has got high fat, adequate protein, and low carbs. So this is a diet that we have to uh, give our children, and we find just including that, just just the diet itself. Uh, makes a significant difference in children. But despite this, are we doing enough? So, now, whatever I've listed, many of you have done all of that. You've taken your children to a very good occupational therapist, you've been to a psychologist, you've done ABA, you've done speech therapy, you've tried a different rehab notation, maybe you've tried hyperbaric oxygen, you've tried supplements, you've tried biomedical, you've tried everything, and yet, there's something missing. Our children are improving, but they're not improving as much as we want them to improve. And for that now, we need to fix the damage in the brain. And how are we going to do it? Here is the role of stem cells. So uh, there are still, despite everything else, major unmet medical needs. And these are the results of stem cell therapy. This is our data from 700 patients um, because we present the data at the end of, we have to wait for a year and then analyze the data after two years. But we've treated now more than 2,500 patients. As you can see, 33% of the patients have a significant uh, uh, improvement with it. That means they come close to normal. We call them neurotypical. So 33% of our children can become neurotypical. Uh, 29, that means they now are as close to normal as you can get. They're independent. They're studying in normal schools. Yes, you heard that correct. I said they're studying in normal schools, going to college, graduating, uh, working, making a living. So that's what this 33% is. 29% have a moderate improvement. That means they improve, they become independent, but they still have some symptoms. And uh, they're not you know, fully integrated into mainstream life, but, but they have improved a lot. They still become independent. 25% of the, of the children have a mild improvement and 10% uh, don't improve. So uh, now a question in your mind will be, but, but I want my child to be in the 33%. You know, I want her. Why are some children... Why only one third of the children you've treated getting close, you know, having a significant and, and what is this 10%? Why why are 10% not improving? So, like you, we were also very interested, very, you know, we wanted to know. So we studied our data and what we found was something very interesting. What we found was that all these children, all these children were younger than 11 years. So they were in the first 10 years. Uh, this was between 10 and 20 and all these children, no improvement for over 20 years. Which means that the earlier you treat the child, the better results you're likely to get. That is why the urgency. Because sometimes parents say, let's wait, let's wait and watch, we wait till this treatment becomes more established. Well, the longer you wait, the longer you wait, the more chances are that we will get results in this domain. The earlier you treat, the chances are we will get results in the significant improvement part. So, yes, so we have a 90% success rate. But if you look at children below 20, then it's almost, it, you know, it, it, it's close to, uh, it's about 89%. 10% uh, are improving. And this has an age correlation. Uh, and these are the different symptoms that improve. So, you know, 
uh, the different types of sim groups, their hyperactivity, their speed, their eye contact. So this is just showing the percentage of improvement in symptoms. Now, I am actually saying something that your doctors have never told you. I'm actually saying that using stem cell therapy, we can reverse all of it. And what makes me, I'm a responsible doctor. I cannot just make irresponsible statements like that because you say, well, how come I've never been told that? I mean, how come, you know, I've always been told autism is not reversible and you're coming and standing and telling us that autism is reversible. I can only say it if there is a statistical significance in our results. And I'll show you we have it. And if I have objective improvements, not I believe, I feel I like objective on scans, brain scans show a change. Then and only then I can say that stem cell therapy works for autism. So this is just to show you when we do, for example, there's a score called the CGI score. There's an Indian scale for autism score. And this is the average. We take a group of patients. We take the average before and then we take the average after stem cells. And then by a mathematical calculation, we see is it statistically significant. Only if the difference, so I guess this is an average of all patients before and average of all patients later. And only if the difference between before and after is significant, we can say it is statistically significant. Here again, the different relation, the different aspects, social, emotional, speech, etc. before and after, before and after. And you can see that all of these are statistically significant. <coughs> Now, this really is the most important slide of my talk. As you can see, you see above, the above three. Uh, this is a horizontal section, a front section, and a lateral section. And here, this damage, you can see this blue. This is damage to the brain, brain that is inactive, brain that is weaker, brain, brain where the metabolism is less than normal brain. Uh, the same thing in a different side, you can see it like that. And if you see from the side, you can see it like this. Now, this is before the stem cell. Now, let's see the same child six months later. You can see this blue is almost completely gone. Look at this blue. It's almost completely gone. Look at this blue. It's reduced significantly. This has never been shown before in the field of medicine. Never before. And we have not just one or two. We've got 2,500 such scans. Two, yes, you heard it right. 2,500 scans. Before and after showing that the damage of autism can be reversed. So that's the mindset thinking I want you to have, that our children have got a part of the brain that's not working. It's possible to fix it. It's possible to repair it. These are the, you know, of course, we have 2,500. I'm just showing you two or three. You can see here before the damage, and you can see after it's gone. You know, before and after, you can see it's gone. Here again, you can see before, you can see all the damage before, and you can see after the treatment is done. So uh, this is objective proof that we can reverse the damage. Now, then people asked us, well, you're, you're doing scans at six months. How do you know after two years, three years, the damage doesn't come back? So in a few parents who had doubts, we actually, and who were willing, we did scans uh, year after year. So you can see here, this is 2012, we can see the damage. In 2013, you can see it's much less. In 2014, it's, it's still less, which means that the improvement in children with autism following stem cell therapy is progressive. It keeps on, uh, you know, improving over a period of time. So not only is that an improvement, but it's a progressive improvement. So, uh, like I said, though, you know, uh, all our work is published and the world's first, yes, you heard it correctly, the world's first international PubMed index. PubMed index is a very, is an index where only high quality publications are allowed. On stem cell therapy in autism came from our country, from India, and it was written by us. And this is a matter of honor for us that the world's first paper on stem cell therapy came from us. The second paper came from China. The third paper came from Italy. The fourth and fifth papers have come from the United States. So as you can see, India and China are leaders in the field of stem cell therapy. European and American publications have come after us. Uh, apart from the world's first paper, we've also published 16 other, 16 total scientific publications in autism. And uh, now, a question which very often parents ask us is, can you combine stem cells with other treatments? Yes, that's the beauty. Stem cells does not come in the way of any other treatment. So whatever you were doing before, 
you can continue doing later. Very often, you know, if you take some treatment, somebody will say, no, if you're taking this, you have to stop that. No. For stem cell, no. Whatever you are doing, whatever rehabilitation you are doing, whatever biomedical you are doing, whatever other treatment you are doing, you can continue that later. Right? <laughs> so here just a couple of videos from patients. You saw the first video. Uh, so I, I just picked up one child from each of the continent and we had short videos, but since you already seen in the beginning of the week, I'm going to skip. Uh, we're just going to see a couple of them. So we just saw Ganesha's movie at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, to the next one. Um, we went to different doctors. Is, we went uh, to different hospitals. This is a small story of a mother with triplets. So you, you know, you think managing one child of autism is difficult, right? Many of you in the, who are listening to this webinar will have one child and, you know, you'll be through so much managing one child. Imagine if you had triplets and all three had autism, what would your state be? This is a short story of a mother from Kenya who had two kids before. So, you know, she's got five kids in all and she had triplets. All three had autism. So let's look at her story briefly. We went to different doctors, we went to different hospitals, and when I brought it up, they were like, oh, no, 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 don't worry. It's because they are boys, they are triplets, they were premature. I would be walking out and I'm like, bye. And no child is crying, no child is waving back bye. And by then, for sure, I knew that they should be doing that. The children had this behavior of disappearing. In fact, Eric disappeared three times in the middle of the night. The biting, the spitting, the scratching. How are we going to stop this behavior? We went to see the neurologist, and in five minutes, he said, his children are autistic. As parents, it was very traumatizing. First of all, we didn't understand what autistic means. So I decided to really get to read a lot about autism. I remember the first time I read about stem cell. I was like, wow. This is really good. We had a lot of questions which we asked and we got very clear answers from Dr. Sharma. The day of the stem cell itself came. Actually, I was a bit anxious, of course, but really I didn't have fear. A bit of apprehension, anxiety, of course, as a mother, but I knew they were good. We put a needle in this pelvic bone and then we take out the bone marrow, which is the fluid inside the bone. The pure stem cell, once they are ready, a thin needle is inserted into the lower back. We inject the stem cells into the cerebrospinal fluid. It flows all the way up to the brain. Things that would have taken probably years to be accomplished in my sons, in like eight months' time, we've really been able to come very far. They used to defecate on their clothes, but now they can use the toilet. We've seen a lot of improvement in terms of spitting. The tantrums have reduced. Sleeping used to be a problem before, but at the moment, he's taken to his bed. It takes a few minutes and he's asleep. You see my son's cycle. We try to make them understand what it is to pedal and be good. But after stem cell, when we arrived in Kenya the following day, we went out and these guys could cycle. I'm going to send you to buy tomato paste, okay? I'm going to send you to buy what? In the shop. Where is the shop? Here. Okay. So I'm going to give you money for what?
parents ask me, so do you really think stem cell work? And I'm like, <laughs> I can see changes, I can touch, I can feel, I can smell. Of course, for me, stem cell work, I'll do it until my children get well. So, uh, there are a couple of other videos that just go on. Now, we, now, should we look at autism? Now, we look at cerebral palsy. So in cerebral palsy, the brain damage is occurs at birth because of less of oxygen to the brain. There are different types of brain damage and it can cause different types of cerebral palsy. Either one side called hemiplegic or there are different types, diaplegic, quadriplegic, etc. So this all depends on the nature of the damage to the brain. Now as you can see here, the damage is far more severe. You can see it's darker, more blue. So uh, the damage in cerebral palsy is more severe as compared to autism. There are certain medical treatments that we can use, anti-convulsions for the fits, anti-spastic medicines, uh, you know, there are certain uh, procedures that we can do, orthopedic and neurological procedures that can help manage, but still, <coughs> the child's mean symptoms don't go away, they still remain wheelchair bound. So let's look at the results of stem cell therapy in cerebral palsy. And here you can see we've uh, no, we treated more than 2,000 patients. This is data from 660, where 20% had a significant improvement. That means they came close to living a normal life. So you can see that it was 33% in autism, it's 20% in cerebral palsy. 41% have moderate improvement. That means they become independent, but they still have some symptoms. 30% had a mild improvement, 9% did not improve. Now, in CP, there is no age correlation. In autism, this is the, it depends on age. In CP, it depends on the severity of damage. So, the damage is very severe. They are more likely to be in the no improvement group. If the damage is lesser, you can be in the significant improvement group. Uh, these are the symptoms that improve their oromotor drooling. Very often, these children do saliva. That, that stops in the majority of patients. Their balance, the upper, lower limb movements, the tone of their muscles. Uh, movement emulation, all of these things improve. Uh, and this is a scan to show you. You can see here above blue, you can see it's bilateral, it's very severe before. And you can see afterwards, it's significantly reduced. Here, the entire half of the brain was damaged. And you can see it's uh, below is uh, above is before stem cell therapy, below is after stem cell therapy. And you can see the improvement. On the left hand side, <clears throat> you can see the damage before stem cells. Same patient after stem cells, the blue has almost completely gone. So this is objective proof that the damage in the brains of children with cerebral palsy can be repaired as well. And our paper is published in this uh, scientific journal, Stem Cell International, and this is a clinical study uh, to show how bone marrow cells improve in CP. This is not the world's first paper, but <coughs> it was among the first few. <coughs> And uh, we have several other papers, you know, the papers on stem cell therapy. These all published by us. Uh, let's see a video of this child from Kenya. This child was uh, spastic quadriplegia, completely wheelchair bound. He could not sit, stand, or walk independently. And let's see the changes. You can see earlier, totally wheelchair bound. And now you can see after stem cells, he's able to sit by himself. He can, you know, remove his t shirt. He's able to pack a bag. Uh, he's got fine motor skills. He's standing. He can actually stand up. Take out a bottle of water and open it. This is impossible earlier. Totally impossible. He was just totally wheelchair bound. And you can see him doing it. Now you can see there. He's able to walk independently. So this is amazing. A totally wheelchair bound child who could not use his hands at all, who could not stand, is now walking independently and is able to use his hands to, you know, for daily activity things, packing bags, taking out water from a refrigerator. So this is life altering. It's completely life-altering because you actually can get rid of the wheelchairs of these children. We've had parents who called us and said, you know, we've thrown away, we've given away the wheelchair to somebody because our child no longer needs it. And that's such a happy moment. And this is the power and the magic of stem cells. Uh, now we come to, uh, we will very briefly go over some other conditions. Uh, muscular dystrophy is a condition where the muscles become progressively weaker. 
and uh, you can see here uh, just to show you like at five years the gray this is normal muscle and you can see over the years the gray is going it's becoming white which is fat and by 16 years there's almost no muscle so you can see at five years normal and at 21 years almost no muscle and then these children, they especially those one type of muscular dystrophy called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, they don't survive uh, beyond that uh, 20, 24, 25 years. They all die by this age. And uh, we are able to save their lives. So, we, you know, uh, this is data from 1,500 patients. The significant improvements in very small, 4.5, but uh, 35 had moderate, 20, my 14% was stable. Now, you have to remember, if not treated, all these patients would have died. This is a condition, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, where we have a 100% death rate. So if there is even stability, that is good because you've saved their life. And, you know, of course, improvement is an improvement. So 85% in here, you can see the uh, comparison. This is a, a graphic description. If you treat the patients on a complete you can see that they stabilize. And those who did not take stem cells would deteriorate like this. So this is a comparison between untreated patients who deteriorate and treated patients who stabilize. And here is uh, evidence of improvement. Above you can see this is before stem cell, it's all white. And after stem cell, you can see muscle is started coming back. So there's muscle regeneration. And uh, this is a very, you know, weak EMG nerve conduction. It shows the muscle contraction is weak before stem cells. And see after stem cell become so you know powerful so <clears throat> this is objective proof that the muscles are contracting better and we have uh, several publications on this as well uh, here is a child from California uh, from the United States uh, child with Duchenne muscular dystrophy he was totally wheelchair bound he could not he could just barely crawl <coughs> he could not stand and after stem cell you can see he's able to stand Then he started walking using a walker. And now he's, he's walking between parallel bars. Now he's walking independently without holding anything. <coughs> this is indoors. And now you can see he's walking outdoors. So this is the kind of improvement uh, that you can have. And more important than walking, we have saved this child's life because if untreated, these children die. And he was invited to meet President Obama at the White House. Uh, you know, so that is this child. Then intellectual disability or what was earlier referred to as mental retardation. Now we don't use that word. We call it intellectual disability. And you can see the brain damage is slightly different from autism and CP. It is milder but more widespread. And these are our results, 84% uh, improvement, 20% significant, 25 moderate, 39 mild, 13% don't improve. So 84% of children improve. Uh, the symptoms that improve was their memory, problem solving, social aspects, and toilet training. And here's a scan before. You can see before the brain damage, and you can see afterwards, it's not there, it's gone. And here's the world's first paper. Again, this is the world's first paper on uh, the role of... Um, uh, bone marrow mononuclear cells in intellectual disability and this was published by us and we have three other papers after that uh, here's this uh, she had intellectual disability she was she, early she was very aggressive poor understanding uh, you know she had difficulty in crossing obstacles you can see that she's able to cross them much better now uh, there was difficulty in copying and you can see it's improved a lot and There's improved coordination. Very nice. Smells good, looks good. And with stool, perfect combination. You know, one prizes in cooking, etc. So you know, that's, that's the kind of improvement that you can get. Uh, now we come to spinal cord injury. So there are sometimes uh, people have accidents, road traffic accidents, fall from heights. When a spine gets fractured and they get paralyzed in both their legs, sometimes and hands and legs and others, 
Uh, this is data from over a thousand patients. Again, you can see 96% uh, of them improved, 24 significant improvement, 56 moderate, 15% mild, 3% did not improve. Uh, the improvement in symptoms were their tightness or spasticity, uh, sensation, uh, trunk control, post, you know, posture, etc. And this work is published uh, in an international journal. This is our paper on thoracic spine injury, where the paralysis happens in the lower legs. And uh, we have nine other scientific papers. And here we show you a video. This was a uh, video of a soldier in the Indian Army who was shot by a terrorist. He received a bullet injury. And uh, when he came to us, this young man just told me, Doc, make me good enough so I can get back uh, to active duty. And let's see how he improved after stem cells. So here he was when he came, bedridden, completely immobile. He was not even able to sit. He was totally paraplegic. And, um, you know, before you can see, he tried to sit, he would fall. And now he was able to sit. Uh, he, before it was, he was to struggle to do this. And now you can see he was able to get onto a wheelchair much easier. And, you know, he can actually transfer from a wheelchair to a car just by himself. There was no, nobody helped him do that. Um, and you see, he started walking independently with a walker and spin. So from being totally paralyzed, no movement, he actually received uh, the most award called the Shorya Chakra. This is the highest award you get in peacetime. He also won the bronze medal in um, in the National Shooting Championships. And he joined back active duty in the Army. The, you know, the Army normally does not take people who have severe disability. But he improved so much from being totally paralyzed. He improved so much that now he has joined back duty in the Indian Army. So these are the kind of improvements you can get from stem cells. Then brain strokes. You have uh, people who have a brain attack. They get uh, damage to the brain and one half of the brain is paralyzed. And here, of course, you can see that the significant improvements are a lot. 50% of the patients have a significant improvement. 3% don't improve. And here's a scan. You can see before uh, there is a lot of brain damage. And afterwards, you can see the damage has improved. You can see here, bro, significant damage, and now the damage is much less. And uh, all our work is published in, on stroke is published in scientific journals in six papers. Uh, here's this teacher who had a stroke. She was uh, she had a right-sided paralysis. She could not walk she, uh, independently. And you can see that she was, you see on the right side, independently, she's able to roll. Uh, she's able to get up by herself. Earlier, she needed assistance, and now on the right side, you can see she's using her hand. She can move by herself, her upper limb, lower limb. And now you can see, you know, before she could hardly walk, and now she's walking independently without a stick, without anything. Uh, she's able to climb stairs as well. You know, and, and now she has resumed a job. For her, it was very important to get back to work. So, despite having a total stroke and complete paralysis, she improved so much with stem cells that she joined back her teaching job and she's back to teaching. So this is the, again, the results of stem cell therapy. Uh, you can have a head injury due to road traffic accidents and very often these patients go into a coma and they become unresponsive. So again, here are results, 29% significant improvement, 5% don't improve. And this scan shows the damage before and you can see on the right side, the damage is improved. Uh, again, our work is published in a very prestigious uh, Springer Plus journal. These are our other papers. Uh, here's this, and we had a road traffic accident. It was totally vegetative, totally unresponsive. And, uh, you know, you could not talk, you could not communicate. He was like this before. And after the treatment, you can see he started responding. You know, he started recognizing. You know, earlier he was vegetative, no response at all. And now on the right hand side, you can see the response. Uh, you know, uh, he would obey commands, he would listen to you, he would understand. So, literally from a vegetative state, with stem cells, he woke up. There you can see his response. You can see now there's somebody you can communicate with. Again, you can see his right hand totally paralyzed. And uh, here, after stem cell, he's using his right hand. And, uh, you know, he started eating. Earlier, he was not able to eat by himself, and now he started eating by himself. And... Uh, now he's able to count uh, fingers randomly. And most important, from that stage, he's reached a stage where he can actually use a mobile phone. So from being vegetative, he started using a mobile phone. So this is uh, the improvement of following stem cells. And this is the last condition, motor neuron disease. This is a disease uh, which has a 
extremely high fatality. 90% of the people die within five years. And there is no treatment, no medical treatment available. So we did a, uh, we did a, a, a control study analysis and the patients who took stem cells, they stabilized like this. And the patients who did not take stem cells, they continued to deteriorate like this. So there was a significant difference between stem cell treated patients and non-stem cell treated patients. Uh, the results of this control study, this is called a control study, where you compare treated versus untreated patients. It was published in the American Journal of Stem Cells, and uh, it showed, as you can see here, in an untreated patient, you know, they deteriorate like this, whereas in the treated, different groups of treated patients, they all sort of stabilize. And uh, we've got eight scientific publications on that. Uh, there's a small video of one of my colleagues. Uh, what you're going to see is a video of Dr. Himani Sane. Dr. Himani Sane is one of our colleagues. She's the head of our research. She was a doctor in New York University. She got her MD from New York. She was studying there when she developed a disease called motor neuron disease. Uh, she went to the best hospitals in the world, John Hopkins, everywhere else. And everybody said, you're not going to survive. You are going to die within a few months. She came to India. I treated her. And uh, it's been... Over 10 years since I treated her, not only has she improved, uh, but she's now working with us. So let's hear what she has to say. I am Dr. Nimaya Sani, a graduate from CGS Medical College and KM Hospital and MD from New York Medical College. I will practice it as a consultant in New York when I tell you that. Motor neuron disorder. I started deteriorating neurologically, and so I confronted the best doctors in America, including John Hopkins, who told me there was no hope and this was a fatal Then I came to India and approached Dr. Roshana, who treated me with stem cells. 10 years ago. After centennial therapy, there has been hardly of disease progression and improvement in feet, swallowing, and stamina. I have improved significantly and now working as head of research at the Asian Brain and Science Institute. It is my request to all my friends and colleagues to please consider stem cells as a treatment option for improving neurological disorders. I am a living example of the potential and power of stem cells. So a question that will come to you is, how safe is this treatment? Because as parents, we're always concerned, you know, is this treatment safe? So what are the complications? So we've had complications that divide into two major complications, major something that's severe, something that lasts, and minor complications. So we've had no major adverse events or complications, no neurological deterioration. So no patient of ours became worse after the stem cells, no patient. There are some minor complications. So 3% of the patients who have epilepsy already, they have repeated epilepsy already before the stem cells, their epilepsy can increase uh, 3% of it um, of those patients. 10% get a spinal headache which lasts for about 2 days but this happens immediately after the treatment and it settles before you go home. Some patients may have nausea, vomiting, local pain, etc. But apart from this, there are no major adverse events. Uh, this is the institute where we do the work. It's called Neurological Brain and Spine Institute and we all our work is done in this institute set up dedicated for this purpose. It's in Navi Mumbai in India. Uh, we've treated uh, over 10,000 patients from all the six continents of the planet, uh, from 70 countries, from all the continents. And people from all over the world come to us uh, for receiving help for their neurological conditions. Uh, our core team, apart from myself, Dr. Nandini and Dr. Prerna, these are the stem cell experts. Dr. Jacob is India's most respected uh, rehabilitation therapist for neurological disorders. And Dr. Himani is head of research. We just heard her. Uh, we believe a lot in quality control, so we have various accreditations like our laboratory is good laboratory practice and good manufacturing practice certified. We have the ISO registration. 
Uh, this is a stem cell lab. It is among the best equipped labs anywhere in the world because this is where the work is done. Uh, we are also uh, accredited by uh, the European Medical Association, the EMA, the European Medical Association as best medical practice. Uh, so uh, you get this when your standards meet European standards. This is given to us in Brussels, Belgium. So we are accredited by the European Medical Association. Uh, we have published a total of 18 books. And uh, we believe that stem cell therapy along with rehab and integrative therapy together makes the difference. So it, it all is multidisciplinary. And normally for each of these things, you have to go to different hospitals, different places. We have all these available with us together. Uh, our work has received a lot of international recognition. We got this very prestigious Rose of Paracelsus Award, uh, which comes from the Socrates Nomination Committee from Oxford, United Kingdom. Uh, this is given for pioneering research. Uh, we received the European Award for, uh, uh, for Best Practices from the European Society of Quality Research. Uh, this is again for our pioneering research in this field. Uh, we received, I received the Bharat Gaurav Award. This was given in the British Parliament for the work that we do. Uh, we were nominated the Best Stem Cell Therapy Center uh, at the National Healthcare Excellence Awards in 2016. Uh, we again were the best stem cell therapy center in India 2018. This award was given to us by the Minister of Health. Um, the best stem cell therapy center in our state. This was given to us by the Chief Minister. Um, now, to help you make the decision, you could visit our website, which is neurogenbsi, brain and spine institute.com. Uh, if you email us, you will get a response in less than 30 minutes uh, because we have doctors around the clock who will reply to you instantly. Or you could WhatsApp chat, audio, video call us, or you could call us at this number. You could also set up a Skype or a WhatsApp video interview with a prior appointment. Uh, so we have, we have different modalities. So you could actually, and um, uh, in fact, all those of you who have attended this uh, talk uh, will be entitled to a free uh, discussion, one-on-one -on -one discussion with, uh, with myself. Uh, so, Ms. Digyasa, who introduced the talk, will be coordinating and uh, a time, and then we, we, you know, we can have a, a personal one-to-one -one discussion about your uh, particular issue. Uh, once you have decided, uh, uh, you will have specific coordinators appointed, and uh, for all of you, the uh, coordinator will be Ms. Digyasa, uh, who introduced, and she. So, you have a one-point contact. Uh, you don't have to deal with multiple people. One person will help you during the entire project. Uh, what happens is when you come here, you have to arrive on a Sunday. So we have arrived, we have a one week program and the days are fixed. So you can only arrive on a Sunday. And the uh, evaluation is done on Monday, Tuesday is the stem cell therapy. Uh, Wednesday to Saturday, we have rehabilitation and integrative therapy. On Saturday, you could go back home. Uh, so that's our uh, program, how we do it. Uh, Sunday admission, Monday investigation, Tuesday stem cell. Wednesday to Saturday, we have an integrative therapy. Uh, how safe and easy it is to travel to India uh, during these times? So let's just take a video of a patient who came to us recently and uh, let's see what she has to say. This patient came to us from Zambia. My full name is uh, Lorraine. I'm from the Banda. I use Banda because uh, I'm married. I am from Kitwe, Zambia. Zambia is a country in Africa. Central Africa. That's where I am coming from. I came on uh, the 27th of uh, November from Lusaka, Zambia, via the Islam in Tanzania to Mumbai, which is in India. I came, I brought my son to the Neurogen Institute, Brain and Spine Institute. Maharaja. Yeah, from Zambia to India, I traveled safely. All that uh, is required to just say for a person around this time of the COVID year to travel is to have the COVID uh, certificates, which I did. We managed to get them on time to travel. So traveling from Zambia to Dar es Salaam was all right. They did not ask a lot of uh, issues other than uh, the exemption certificate from uh, the 
Nubian center. That's the very most important document. That one has got to have in order to travel. Otherwise, they don't allow anyone on the plane. So once they saw that one, from Lusaka, Zambia, they asked the same women in Mumbai when I arrived for the same document. The Nubian team have been very, very excellent in as far as giving documentation is concerned. They are efficient, they produce the information right on time. They never delay it. In my preparation, I had them on time. The Northern Institute, uh, the Northern Center, is very, very accommodating. Now, in my country, they are just giving visas for medical travel. It doesn't matter where you're going, but it has to be a medical visa. That medical visa is issued to the person uh, who is traveling, who is sick, as well as the attendant or attendants. So the airports are not congested as before. The airports are just okay, but still, there are a lot of people traveling. So, um... What's different about us? First, we have the largest number of scientific publications in the world, uh, almost 100. Uh, when in international book editors, when they want to introduce a chapter on stem cell therapy, they write to us. So there must be some reason why they are writing to us. Uh, we are the only stem cell therapy center that does neuro cases only. Uh, so we focus on neurological cases. Uh, we use safe stem cells, inject them intrathetically, which directly reaches the brain. Uh, we have a comprehensive rehab program and integrative therapy. We have treated over 10,000 patients from 70 countries in the last 10 years. So we have the world's largest experience, not India's, but the world's largest experience, over 10,000 patients. Uh, we have a team of experienced professionals. We are constantly researching into the causes, nature of nervous damage, and for looking at newer and better treatments. And our work is approved and monitored by a government. The CDSCO is the equivalent of the FDA. The Indian FDA is called the CDSCO. And they have a certified institutional ethics committee which monitors our work. So we have an oversight. We, are, we don't do whatever we want. A government certified uh, committee monitors our work. So my conclusion is that uh, adult stem cells, the ones from the bone marrow, are safe and effective. Now note, I said safe before effective. The safety is very, very important. So they are safe and effective for autism, cerebral palsy, and for many other conditions that can cause paralysis or damage for which there are no other treatments. So, uh, to be, you know, I like to sort of end by quoting what Mahatma Gandhi said, that to believe what has not occurred in history will not occur at all, uh, is to argue disbelief in the dignity of man. So just because something could not happen before, it doesn't mean it won't happen again. So... Just because earlier doctors believed that autism cannot be cured, cerebral palsy cannot be treated, that's not true anymore. We can do it. So I, I'm again ending with uh, this slide. I'm showing you that there is a fracture in the bone. And would you give rehabilitation of this? No, you would fix it. Then why should we give rehabilitation on damaged brain? Shouldn't we repair the damage using stem cells and then give rehab? So, uh, the future of cellular therapy is a new field called, uh, in also something called anti-aging, which is defined to prevent the preventable and to delay the inevitable. And this basically, we are now combining the wisdom of ancient Eastern medical systems with the technology of the West. And there are many other diseases which can be treated along with this. So, uh, this is a combination of various treatments. So, we have hyperbaric oxygen, ozone therapy, cellular therapy, and all these things. And now we are combining these uh, with our uh, treatment programs. So these are called integrative therapies. So one of them is ozone therapy. So oxygen is O2 and ozone is O3. It is a little more powerful <coughs> uh, oxygen like gas. And what it does is <coughs> it helps in improving the oxygenation of different parts of the brain and body combats infection, modulates the immune system. So we are finding ozone therapy to be very, very useful. And so when you come to us, along with stem cells and rehab, you also get ozone therapy. Then we have hydrocolon therapy for clearing the gut. Those who have gut problems, the gut can be improved. Uh, we have cryotherapy. This is a chamber in which the temperature is brought down and it helps in 
various musculoskeletal. This is the latest, one of the latest technological machines that we have um, that that helps various uh, muscle and muscle um, damage. Then we have uh, infrared, which again also helps in um, reducing the pain. Uh, we use high dose vitamins and antioxidants that also again help in the recovery process. So um, we, you know, we showed you hyperbaric earlier that we were using. So here you can see this is the hyperbaric at our center. And uh, so using all these technologies, these modern technologies, we are able to now make a big, big difference. So a combination of these integrative therapies with rehabilitation with stem cells is what makes the difference now. And, and these new treatments we've added over the last year or so, and we found that the improvements are better and faster when we add these. So again, I like to say stem cell therapy is an idea whose time has come and uh, it's time that we all actually help use this for our children. So with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. If any of you have any questions, uh, then please put up. I'd be happy to answer those questions. And uh, if not, uh, please contact Jigyasa and she will set up a one to one discussion with me anytime over the next week or anytime at your convenience. And we can have a detailed discussion on any personal questions that you have. Thank you very much. Shukriya. Hello. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Samina. Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, Samima. Go ahead. Ask your question. Yeah. Uh, my son, he is four and a half years old. Yeah. So can I bring him now or he has to be five years old? No, no, no. He can come now. In fact, the earlier, the better. So we have treated children as young as two years also. Uh, so yes. uh, you do not have to wait till five. Uh, what we suggest is the earlier you do the treatment, the better it is. Our research has shown okay. us. That the earlier you do the treatment, the better you, you get, better results. Okay. So you, you can bring him All right. There is no, no need to wait till he's five. Yeah? Yes, sir. I have another question. Uh, how much the total cost of the treatment? Uh, so that uh, you can uh, you can connect with Ms. Jigyasa later because this is a medical talk. So we do not discuss uh, payments and things on this. It's an informative talk. So there are some... Okay. I, can I see. Okay. Well, what you can do is you can contact Ms. Jigyasa subsequently. She'll be in touch with you. And, uh, sh and and she will discuss this I, okay. detail later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I will. Um, where can I, sorry? Who, who? Where can I have her number? Who I have please. to speak with? So she's going to contact you. She's going. We have we have your contact, and we are going to. She's going. She's going to contact you. Yeah. Right away, immediately after this. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. I'm going to get a WhatsApp message from her. Yeah. Okay, I will. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so, um there's a question from uh, Manoj Patel, uh, who actually asked why neurosurgeon doctors not to go for stem cell therapy is not useful in uh, TBI. So that's not true. I'm a neurosurgeon myself. Uh, I've been a neurosurgeon for over 30 years. And um, uh, the thing is that we have the technology to use. So apart from regular, I do regular neurosurgery as well. And I use stem cells along with that. So there are many doctors who do not have stem cells available to them. And then because they don't have stem cells, they don't have experience with it. And therefore, sometimes they are unaware of the results. Because if you haven't used something, you won't know what the results are. So, um, you know, but we have actually, like I said, we've treated over 10,000 patients with stem cells. And um, we have the results. And again, our results are published. So if, if uh, your neurosurgeon doctors just refer to our scientific publications, 
they would understand the benefit of stem cells. Like I showed you in TBI, that there was a patient I showed you video. He was vegetative, no response at all. And now you could see he's sitting up, walking, talking, using a mobile phone. He had been like this for three years before he came to us. And uh, after stem cells, you could see the significant improvement. Yeah. Uh, so I hope that answers your question, Manoj. Uh, Vagisha said, uh, you are asking, is there any weight-related precursors? Yeah. So the minimum weight has to be 8 kilograms. Uh, 8 kilograms is very little. So any child more than 8 kilograms, we can do the stem cells. 8 kilograms is the minimum uh, weight. Uh, anything over that, 9, 10. And, you know, most of our kids are much much older, you know, are 20, 25 uh, kilos. So that is the only uh, weight-related precursors. Uh, we are awaiting any other questions. If anybody has questions, please, please, please do. <coughs> All right. Uh, if there are no further questions, we could uh, end the webinar here. And once again, I'd like to thank all the participants. I again request you all, you have uh, you have the opportunity to do have a one is to one discussion with me personally. Uh, that could be, uh, you know, about a 20 minute to 30 minute discussion where we can actually discuss whatever you want. So uh, you will be contacted uh, 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 by uh, our staff and uh, please set up a time and you can talk to me individually. Uh, Divya Verma asks, I'm bothered that my child will cooperate <clears throat> during the procedure. Don't worry, Divya. <clears throat> See, our hospital is set up to treat these kind of children. That's what that's the only thing we do in the hospital. So the entire staff, the nurses, the housekeeping, the doctors, the therapists, we are used to having children who have hyper hyperactivity, who have aggression, who are non-cooperative. We know how to deal with them, so we take care of them. We know how to get the cooperation. We do it very gently and firmly. So this is what we do, and we do that every week. So we are we will be able to take care of your child. We the cooperation from your child is our responsibility. Okay, we will make it happen. Hmm? Uh, treatment of diabetic with stem cells? No. Uh, so Mona has asked whether we can treat diabetes. No, we, we treat only neurological disorders. Uh, we do not treat uh, diabetes. Uh, so uh, I'm not able to... Uh, I can't help you with that. Yeah. Uh, so we don't treat diabetes, we are treating only neurological disorders. Then Vagisha said, again, you asked another question, is there any genetic testing required? No, there is no genetic testing required. Uh, all kids with autism do not have a genetic problem, a few do, but whether they have it or not, it doesn't affect our treatment. So we do not do genetic testing. It is available if required. I mean, if parents and people could do it, but it, it, it does nothing. It doesn't help the treatment. We believe that something that doesn't help the treatment is just waste this academic. It's a piece of paper which will tell you you know, if at all there are any genes, there may be nothing or there may be something. So we do not do genetic testing. <clears throat> all right, so uh, with this, I will uh, end the program. Once again, I'm repeating, please, uh, please make uh, use of the opportunity to have a discussion with me. And we can discuss your individual children, your individual problems in greater detail on a one is to one. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for participating. And uh, oh, there's one more question. Uh, is there a waiting period? Uh, no, there is. The waiting period is normally about uh, a week or 15 days. So if you contact us, we can schedule uh, a treatment in the next week. Um, there is uh, normally a one, one to two week waiting period. So. Uh, I, that, that's really not an, not an issue. So you, you, the moment you contact us, uh, what we do is we will you know start the process and uh, you could take it the next week. So I'm waiting for any more questions. Or should there be any? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr.
All right, if there are no more questions, then I, I will say goodbye and I look forward to the one-on-one -on -one consult later and then I look forward to seeing you at Newton. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.